The Los Angeles Lakers, the poster team of the NBA, they hold the biggest name in all of basketball and have the second most championships out of all teams in the league. After a rough few years, the Lakers finally have a chance to compete once again. With the signing of LeBron, they have the piece to start a dynasty in Hollywood. They have many options, assets, and most of all cap space to make it happen. Even though they have been stockpiling young players for a few years, this offseason will mark the beginning of a new era. An era of competing instead of tanking to get a high pick to select the next NBA All-Star in the draft. Let's take a look at how the Los Angeles Lakers will be the next NBA dynasty in the league. What's up YouTube, it's your boy SD back with another video and let's get into it. This offseason was the beginning for something special for the Lakers. A chance for them to go back to the playoffs for the first time since Kobe's time there. They were able to add the best player in the league today, LeBron. Not only is Ann LeBron big, they were able to sign to a 3 year deal with an option for another year. They were able to get something from LeBron that no other team has gone since LeBron first joined the league. Time and flexibility. After LeBron joined Miami, it was officially a win now mentality. In Miami, if the Heat didn't make the finals or win the championship, Pat Riley would have to reconsider the roster and possibly make adjustments to be better the next year. They didn't have the luxury of getting a young talent and progressing them to be great over the next few years. Even when LeBron went back to Cleveland in 2014, the team was tied up. LeBron was only willing to sign short term deals that would force the Cavaliers to make moves to win or else he would threaten to leave once again. The Lakers on the other hand got lucky and have a couple years to be in position to win. LeBron trusts that the front office will put the Lakers in a spot to compete. Now that they got LeBron locked up, they need to put a supporting cast around him to win. They already have a young core of Lonzo, Kuzma, Ingram, and Hart to support LeBron for the future. It seems like each player has the potential to take an important role on a competing team. Lonzo has the potential to be a great playmaker and with him gaining a ton of strength this offseason, it seems like he will increase his durability and help his finishing in the paint. If he's able to become a more efficient shooter, which it seems like he's improving because his percentage did improve at the end of last season, he can be a lethal option. Also, Rondo being a teammate of his can help him become the elite playmaker he has the potential to be. Next on the list is Kyle Kuzma. Kyle was able to come out of nowhere last year and make the all-rookie first team. Being one of the Lakers' best shooters and moving forward, it seems like he can help square the ball when LeBron is off the court. It seems like he's making big improvements because at the Lakers scrimmages this summer, he seems like a better player than last year and is capable of a bigger role. Another young Laker who seems like they are due for a bigger role is Brandon Ingram. He has been working with the strength trainer who worked with Kevin Durant. It seems like he's due for a breakout season this year. On top of getting stronger, Magic Johnson refused to trade him and LeBron's camp thinks he can take a Scottie Pippen role next year. He had to be number one man in LA for his first two years, but with LeBron there it should take pressure off of him and he could possibly become a 20 point per game scorer. The last player on the list is Josh Hart, the Summer League MVP. He plays good defense and it seems like he can become a solid 3 and D player in the league. With so many talented playmakers and scorers on his team, someone like him who can spot up and lock up players on the other side of the court is vital. It seems like he can be the overlooked key piece that will be valuable in the long haul. Look for him to have a Clay Thompson type role in the future. This young core has a bright future and LeBron should help him progress even faster. The next most important part is the veterans and the identity they are building. They are building a scrappy team that will play great defense. They also brought in many playmakers so they don't have the issue that Cleveland did when LeBron was off the court. They brought in Rondo, Stevenson, Beasley, McGee, and re signed Caldwell Pope. They are all scrappy defenders who will get under the other team's skin and can create all of their own shots, minus McGee. They also gave them all big dollars this offseason for one year deals so next offseason they can re-sign them to cheaper long term deals. This is important because of the chance they have to bring in another superstar next offseason. Next offseason is big with the Lakers having 27 million dollars in cap and if they move Luol Deng, 45 million. This means they can sign a max level player. There are connections between Kawhi and the Lakers and that will definitely make the Lakers the number one team in the league if they get him. If they are unable to land him, they will also have a chance that Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, and DeMarcus Cousins. Kyrie will probably refuse to join LeBron again and Porzingis and Towns are restricted meaning they are going to be stuck with their current teams. You might be thinking though, how are they going to be able to keep their young core if they spend all that cap space? But the thing is, they have bird rights, and bird rights means they can re-sign over the salary cap to re-sign their players. Also, Lakers have so much money, being the biggest brand in basketball, they will be able to afford the luxury tax. Now you might be thinking though, even with the young court, LeBron, veterans, and a max contract spot, can they really beat the Warriors? The thing is, the Warriors might fall apart soon. Clay is a free agent next year and he can make 40 to 50 million elsewhere and even though he says he will stay with the Warriors, 40 to 50 million is hard to decline especially since he probably won't be getting that money back at any point in his career. 
If Cousins returns back to his old form, they are not going to be able to re-sign him because he will get a max from someone else and they can't give him over 5 million since they don't have bird rights on him. Last, Kevin Durant has been facing pressure on Twitter where you can all clearly tell he hates being the villain so he might leave. Also, he has aspirations to play for the Knicks and validate himself because the rings he wins in Golden State really doesn't mean anything to fans right now. Even if only Clay and Cousins leave, they will be a lot weaker and LeBron and Kawhi Lakers can for sure have a chance to beat them. I feel like the Lakers will win a championship in 2020 and be a future NBA dynasty. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell to get a notification for when I post, and check out my last video. I'm out.